As mentioned previously, curler illumination or alignment of the light path to the optical path in the microscope is very important. You must do it for each objective that you're working with. To do this, we're going to use features of the illuminator. We're going to manipulate the field diaphragm. We're going to manipulate the height of the condenser by turning the knob up and down. And we're going to use these two alignment tools to align the condenser to the optical path. In discussing curler illumination, it's important to understand how the lamp is affecting your image and how the condenser is centered to the optical path of the microscope. Here on my Nikon Microscopy U, we have a nice little tutorial under curler illumination that shows you both the filament alignment and the condenser alignment. So let's go through this tutorial. Here you see the actual filament which shows up in the field of view. Now in modern microscopes it's not as important to do this because the modern bulbs are already pre-centered. But here what we can do is we can focus on the filament, make sure it's nice and sharp. We can rotate it and we can also align it in X and Y so that it's fully aligned to the center of the microscope. Again, you shouldn't have to do this with modern microscopes because the bulbs are pre-aligned. But it just gives you an idea of how important the lamp is to the illumination of the microscope. Now let's discuss the condenser alignment because this is how you actually do curler illumination. To do that, we click on this condenser alignment tutorial and you see here your field of view in the microscope. The first thing to do when you're doing curler illumination is to use the 10x objective and to get your specimen finely focused. So we'll use this sliding bar to get our specimen in the field of view finely focused. Now you close down your field diaphragm, which you can see here, so that you, you can see it in the field of view. And so we want to close it down enough to where we can see almost the whole diaphragm. It's also important that these leaves be nice and sharp. Here you can see that they're somewhat defocused. So we move the condenser height up and down until we get nice sharp leaves on the field diaphragm. Now we can see our leaves nice and sharp in the field of view. But we still have to align our field diaphragm to the field of view. And we do that by the alignment tools that are provided on the side of the microscope to move the condenser to left and right and up and down. And so by manipulating these knobs, you align your condenser using the field diaphragm to the center of the field of view. You get it as aligned as you possibly can. And then you open the diaphragm to just outside the field of view. Now your microscope is aligned both optically and with the light path. In order to do kernel illumination in the microscope, we first put our slide on the stage, we dial the 10x objective into the beam path, and then we lower the condenser into place, also in the beam path. Now we focus our specimen on 10x, we close our field diaphragm down until we can see it in the field of view. Then we raise and lower the condenser until those leaves are nice and sharp, we align the field diaphragm to the field of view using the two alignment knobs and then we open the field diaphragm just outside the field of view. Now our microscope is aligned at that objective. There are three modes of illumination that we use for transmitted light in the Leica confocal microscope. The first one is bright field as you see here. It's simply light passing through your specimen, which in this case is stained. If you're looking at live cells which have been cultured and you look at them in bright field, they might look something like this. And so bright field is not the preferred transmitted light technique for looking at living cells. Differential interference contrast 
is a, is a very wonderful optical staining method. And it allows you to get a three-dimensional image of your cells by using a combination of polarized light and what are called Wallace prisms. And so your, shell, your cells show up very nicely in DIC, which we have on the confocal microscope. Another form of contrast, optical staining method in the microscope, is phase contrast. We do not have phase contrast on this microscope. However, I wanted to show you the difference between phase contrast on live cells and DIC. DIC looks like this with live cells. Phase contrast gives a lot more contrast, but sometimes it's not as useful as DIC. So your preferred methods of illumination and viewing in transmitted light are DIC and bright field. Before we end this session for today, I wanted to show you using the computer screen the difference between DIC or differential interference contrast and bright field microscopy. These are both transmitted light illumination methods and sometimes DIC can be a little more useful than bright field depending on the specimen that you're working with. Now the slide that I have on the microscope today is probably not the best slide to illustrate this, but you will see this as you work with the microscope. So we're gonna focus now on the monitor and you see an image, this is a bright field image of a thin section of plant material and you can see the individual cells and inside one of these cells you see the nucleus. So in bright field, it's fairly well illuminated. However, bright field sometimes lacks as a contrast method. So bright field is one method of transmitted light illumination that you will use, and the other is DIC, or differential interference contrast. So I'm gonna change some software tools here, and you will see the difference when we go to a DIC image. And now you have differential interference contrast, and you can see that there might be a little bit more contrast in the cell that you're looking at. However, because of the polarized light nature of the cell walls, all of these glow highly in this slide. But if you're growing live cells on cover slips or in a culture plate, sometimes Namarsky is a better way of imaging those cells in a transmitted light method.